The metaverse used to be a laughing stock. It was ridiculous with headlines about finally adding legs, or the fact that it feels like an abandoned mall, or obviously the Wii Sports tier graphics. For almost two years since the first announcement, people have laughed at it, thinking that it was a joke, a catastrophic mistake by Mark Zuckerberg, billions wasted on these terrible cartoonish characters. People everywhere online were talking about the end of the metaverse, why the metaverse will never be successful, and ever since, it's always been laughed at, never taken seriously, until now. In a recent episode on Lex Freeman's podcast with Mark Zuckerberg, reality set in as Mark Zuckerberg blew away all expectations. The following is a conversation with Mark Zuckerberg inside the metaverse. Mark and I are hundreds of miles apart from each other in physical space, but it feels like we're in the same room because we appear to each other as photorealistic codec avatars in 3D with spatial audio. This technology is incredible. And I think it's the future of how human beings connect to each other in a deeply meaningful way on the internet. Using some facial scans and some experimental headsets, it became clear to everyone that VR is getting scarily realistic. Whilst this was only a tech demo, the new technology is able to transmit detailed facial expressions data in real time. These are overlaid onto a 3D model, giving seamless photorealism to what used to be a cartoonish joke. And it's just the latest of a whole warehouse of Pandora's boxes that the tech industry has been opening. From ChatGPT preparing for full AI integration with smartphones, to Meta's new smart glasses and headsets, we are standing on the precipice of a holographic future. The biggest recent development is obviously the new technology that was shown off in the podcast. It was conducted completely as VR avatars, with a split screen showing each layer of it. First, the reality of Zuckerberg and Freeman wearing VR headsets and headphones, then the 3D imaging facial scan, and finally the accurate real-time VR image they were both seeing. To say it's an upgrade is a massive understatement. Meta went from this, these goofy looking uncanny valley characters, to nearly photorealism. But how did they make the jump so quickly, and why didn't they make a bigger deal out of this? Well, we're still a little way off of seeing this as a consumer product. According to Zuckerberg, the scans took hours using a specialized machine at Meta's offices. And even then, they only really capture the head and the shoulders. The arms, torso, and the rest are a little bit trickier and seemingly out of reach for now. But if technology has proven anything, it's that once you see these sorts of things in tech demos, it won't be long before we see them in reality. Computers the size of a room shrunk down to a small box in barely a decade, while getting more powerful by an order of magnitude. And it won't be long before you can spend a couple of minutes scanning yourself with a smartphone, then use this technology straight afterwards. And the uses for this technology are almost infinite. And they aren't all insidious, but they do seem wrong in some way. Lots of people are discussing the possibility of bringing back the dead as digital avatars. Using AI models of their personality, combined with this technology, would create a realistic visage that could speak as that person. With a and scan, you could talk to anyone. From your own lost loved ones, the greatest figures from history. It's an unsettling idea. And uh, let's check this guy out. Let's get medieval, player. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't wanted to play a text, you know, adventure game? with Snoop Dogg. They won't really be those people, of course, just whatever the AI model thinks they are, combined with a 3D model. But having them right in front of you, combined with the way AI can seamlessly mimic human expressions, is frightening. And you can easily imagine how this will impact our own lives. If the technology is there, people will be using it for this purpose, there's no denying it. But how can people be expected to move on with their lives? Having constant access to a representation of someone you lost could be like torture. However realistic it gets, you simply can't reduce people down into a set of responses in a 3D image. Whatever Meta, OpenAI, or Apple come up with won't ever compare to real people for a long, long time. Maybe never. This technology might help the grieving process for some people, but it will just draw it out or stop it entirely for others, leaving people in an awful limbo stage. The problem is just one part, though, of how this technology would draw people away from reality and further into our digital world. The more realistic VR becomes, the more people will be sucked away from the real world. We're already seeing the start of this everywhere. When you look around, you see people retreating into their phones mid-conversation. Or like how some people seem to live their entire lives online. With most people spending around 4-6 to six hours a day just on their phone. And Meta's gamble is simple. As the world keeps getting worse in this crisis and VR gets more realistic and enticing, more people will get hooked. Every new part of life they can synthesize will be plugged into the metaverse. Alarmingly, in the Lex Freeman podcast episode, Zark kept describing the end goal of Meta, blending the digital and the real world together so that reality is practically indistinguishable. Another thing that I think is going to be fascinating about being able to blend together the digital and physical worlds in this way is we're also going to be able to embody um, 
AIs as well. And what's scary is that when you're watching this podcast, you realize he's right. This is coming. This is the future. Already our minds are already interconnected with this digital realm. We find ourselves increasingly connected to virtual spaces. Almost subconsciously, our devices have begun to function as an extension of our very consciousness, with our memories, preferences, secrets, passions, emotions, all attached to the virtual world. However, when our very existence and cultural fabric become enmeshed in this realm, it's a moment for profound reflection and is leading to what the philosopher Robert Nosnik coined the experience machine. And his idea of the experience machine eerily mirrors the essence of the metaverse. In his thought experiment, he imagined a device that could be attached to one's brain, stimulating you to experience boundless euphoria. And if people were asked to experience this, most people would decline, as they would want a life imbued with purpose, not just constant undeserved happiness. But let's push the boundaries a little bit here. What if there existed a mechanism that could somehow trigger infinite significance, constantly giving you purpose in a digital world? Perhaps this is the precipice we're standing on now, with the metaverse offering a semblance of meaning and an avenue to escape loneliness by connecting all of us around the world in this digital world controlled by Zuck, from shopping, from businesses, social events, family gatherings, job interviews, all these memories, moments, and purpose within a world controlled by Meta. And in this world, you'll possess the capability to chase any pleasure you like, to craft any life that you dream of. And it may all feel consequential, like it would in the real world, but it's just a mirage designed to ensnare you within the Metaverse's intricate web of control. In essence, the Metaverse would become the ultimate intoxicant. And this isn't as far-fetched as you might think. Sean Parker, former Facebook president, has openly acknowledged the toxic influence that Facebook has over the autonomy of its users. He even revealed that when Facebook engineers conceived the platform, their primary objective was, in his words, to take as much of your time and consciousness as possible. How do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible? And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while. Describing it almost like a narcotic, as he went on to say that Facebook fundamentally alters your connection with society and with one another. The unintended consequences of, 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 a, of a network when it grows to a billion or two billion people, and it, and it, begin, and it, it literally changes your relationship with society, with each other, with yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 it probably interferes with productivity in weird ways. And this is the bare bones Facebook he's talking about. What about an entire reality, an entire universe? And when he said this a few years ago, it barely gained any attention. And still, there seems to be no attention on this fact with the metaverse coming into our lives. No one seems to care about this. No one seems to care that our freedom is slowly going to be eroded in a world created by someone who causes users dumb fucks. And as almost all of us are so addicted to our screens today, what's it going to be like when we start living in the ultimate experience machine, designed by someone who wants to addict your consciousness to it? The whole linchpin of Metaverse success hinges on its ability to keep users glued to their screens, ensuring a constant influx of money. And it seems like very soon this is going to happen, as Zuckerberg announced this new smart glasses. The next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. <laughs> Meta's headset, just the first step. Get ready for Elon Musk Neuralink, plugging into your brain. Coupled with AI indistinguishable from reality, it won't be long before Tesla's androids are walking around our streets. And just like the dot-com bubble, markets are eating up this vision of the future. Although what's being sold as market salvation is actually growth in just seven tech stocks. Opportunities that are long overhyped and overpriced by the time we get to them. In reality, every other company is sinking into the red. Inflation still rages. And even with a healthy six-figure salary, many people are still living paycheck to paycheck. Now, rich fat cats would have us blissfully watching Fast and Furious 17 on our meta headsets, while they stay one step ahead, storing their wealth in secretive markets known for their stability. But now we can be the billionaires at their own game, getting into a market that keeps growing fueled by the uber rich, the art market. Even during 2023's economic catastrophe, art market sales have risen above pre-pandemic levels. Luckily, you too can invest in this market without needing Elon level money, because our longtime sponsor Masterworks has already sold over $45 million of luxury art, with the net proceeds paid out directly to investors like you. In fact, Masterworks' platform has delivered net returns of 10, 17, and even 32% to name just a few. And with 800,000 plus members, it's no surprise that Masterworks' offerings can sell in minutes. And there's a waitlist to join, but you can get special access to skip that waitlist at the link in the description below. You see, Meta's vision down the road is to enable fully immersive augmented reality entirely within the glasses. This is still a long way off, but this next generation brings us a whole lot closer. The inclusion of AI is the most advanced feature of these. But the most interesting thing about this isn't any of those specs. 
It's that these are the first smart glasses that are built in shipping with Meta AI in them. These glasses will bring it into the forefront of people's lives, literally seeing what they see. Right now, Meta is promising things like translating foreign text. Tomorrow, they'll be able to give you subtitles for what other people are saying in real time, or tell you how much longer you need to cook your dinner. Lots of these uses will only be good for people. It'll be revolutionary for people who have trouble hearing, for example. But on the other hand, it'll make people far more reliant on technology to go about their daily lives. When this happens, people forget these skills. Generally, we don't know which berries are safe to eat or how to chase down an antelope for dinner. It obviously doesn't matter anymore. But their skills we lost as they became redundant. Similarly, as the AI gets more advanced, it will be able to do more and more thinking for you. But our ability to see and understand the world around us shouldn't be something we get machines to do for us. It's like adding train wheels to your own brain. Another selling point for Meta is its integration with Facebook and Instagram. With these glasses, people can constantly be recording their lives and everything around them. They can then live stream it or instantly post it online. It's the next way that Meta's found to break down the barrier between the real world and the virtual one. A slight reduction in the delay between you and social media. Never mind privacy if such a thing even exists today, something that Mark Zuckerberg actively doesn't care about. And Meta's plausible deniability about this comes from the little red LED that they put on the front to tell people when you're recording. But if you just cover that up, like your laptop webcam, nobody would ever know. Just by wearing these though, you're already hooked into Meta's digital world. But they're not the only company looking to centralize and dominate the AI market of course. There is something equally as sinister happening with Microsoft and OpenAI, who are also getting in on the craze. As it was recently announced just a few days ago, that OpenAI and the designer of the iPhone, Johnny Ive, are now collaborating on a project touted as the iPhone of Artificial Intelligence, marking OpenAI's debut into consumer devices. Backed by a $1 billion SoftBank investment, this early stage venture, also involving SoftBank's subsidiary arm and chip design, aims to merge advanced AI with superior design to craft a consumer-centric AI device. While discussions are ongoing and an official agreement is yet to be reached, the product, spearheaded by OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and supported by Johnny Ive's design acumen, is anticipated to hit the market in just a few years. Now, while OpenAI's trajectory seems likened to iPhone's revolutionary journey, I can't help but feel this is far more dystopian and marks a turning point in human history into a future where AI replaces human intuition and creativity. And their partnership with Microsoft and many other companies hints at a coming world where monopolies control not just technology, but human cognition itself. And their vision of an AI, as user-centric as the iPhone, might just be the chain that binds humanity to a future of digital AI servitude. Now, Apple, for all its flaws, does have some semblance of prioritizing user privacy. In contrast, OpenAI's proclamations of ethical AI seem like hollow reassurances when you consider the fact that Microsoft got rid of all of their ethics departments. You see, the path they're caving towards this iPhone of AI isn't a road to enlightenment, but to a world of more control, more inequality, and more importantly, less freedom. Whilst the iPhone was a beacon of innovation, this new AI interface, if unchecked, could soon be the tool that erodes the very fabric of human individuality and freedom. And yet at the same time, it almost feels inevitable because of the lack of government oversight in this area. I mean, the stark reality right now is that corporations, YouTubers, entrepreneurs, even workers that don't integrate AI will soon fall behind from the pack, overshadowed by those who embrace the AI revolution. Even if AI performs on par with or slightly below human capabilities, the economic benefits for businesses are undeniable. And so imagine this on a greater scale when AI does overcome humanity, when its IQ reaches levels that we can't even fathom. Soon we'll have a new phone, a new computer, a new system that is far more complex than anything a human brain can even comprehend. And the reason governments aren't stopping this is because the governments that can harness superior AI will also inevitably outpace their counterparts. So everybody in society right now has to jump into the AI revolution or be left with nothing. That's why we see no regulation here. That's why we see no pushback against this stuff and why it's taking over the world so rapidly, which is what freaks me out so much about OpenAI's new movement. Nobody can stop them and nobody wants to. When all the world's top tech leaders like Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak and many more had their proposal to pause AI research completely ignored by all governments and companies, no one cares about the potential risks. Everybody wants the profit and the control and it mirrors this classic prisoner's dilemma where organizations hesitant about AI or those considering regulations can't even trust the competitors to adopt the same restraint. So everybody keeps going forward even though they know at the end of the day this is the end game for humanity. And even if a consensus ever did emerge, there's always skepticism that global powers like China or Russia would halt their endeavors. 
And it's the same with companies. If OpenAI or Microsoft stops, then Google, Apple, Meta will take over. And so every one of these big tech companies is pushing forward. And if these American companies aren't the ones that succeed, then it might be Chinese AI companies succeed, completely altering the geopolitical sphere. And that's why right now, we are witnessing a race analogous to that of the atomic bomb's creation. But the stakes and potential fallouts might be even graver. Mo Gatwat, the ex-head of Google's AI department and an expert in AI technology, just recently painted one of the most chilling pictures of AI's unchanged potential. Everything, the speed that at which those machines were learning is staggering, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the understanding we have about why they learn, why they do what they do, is very, very limited. With OpenAI now officially giving ChatGPT the ability to connect to the internet, OpenAI can now amass and manipulate information at a rate that leaves human comprehension in the dust. And their journey towards the iPhone of AI is fraught with all the dangers that Mo Gadwat warned of, where AI eventually reaches singularity, the potential point of no return. Because once AI surpasses human intelligence, it will spiral into a self-improving frenzy, evolving its speeds unimaginable to us. It'll speak to us like Einstein speaking to the lowest IQ person about relativity. They won't be able to even comprehend what the words mean. And so in a few years, how are we even going to control something that evolves faster than our comprehension? How do we instill ethics in an entity that just sees them as mere constraints? Especially when Microsoft is already getting rid of OpenAI's ethical departments. We are dancing on the razor's edge between unparalleled advancements and catastrophic consequences. The man widely seen as the godfather of artificial intelligence has quit his job at Google, warning of the dangers of AI. In a lengthy interview with the New York Times, Dr. Hinton said he now regretted his work and is worried that AI technology will flood the internet with misinformation. And OpenAI's quest for the iPhone of AI is more than just a mission, it's a gamble with humanity. A gamble on whether AI will become an integral beneficial part of our daily lives, as the iPhone did, or whether it will spiral into an uncontrollable force, leaving humanity grappling with the aftermath of its own creation. As of now, the future of technology is looking incredibly similar to the present, completely controlled by a small set of monolithic companies designed to suck out as much of your time, attention and money as possible. By meddling with the fabric of society, these companies will make hundreds of billions. AI and VR will only let them become more efficient at infiltrating people lives and destroying freedom.